Hey guys, Zach Marsh here, and this is my review of One Punch Man Season 1 Episode 10, Unparalleled Peril. So this is pro the part of the three-part season finale, and it is absolutely amazing. Because it establishes a lot of what's going to happen for the next three episodes. Um, and it's a pretty good episode in general. Okay, so the episode mainly starts off with, with the Ancient King waking up. And Tatsumaki is sent in to deal with it because she's classed as rank 2. Of course she is. Um, and she's sent in immediately to deal with it. But it's called to be... And it's called to be sent immediately back because something more important is com is has come up. She's annoyed. The Deep Sea King is trying to fight her, but she's kind of just ignoring him. And then... And then basically just flattens him with a meteor and goes home. <laughs> that's, that's, that's hilarious as it sounds. Um, meanwhile, meanwhile, Bang is giving a demonstration to Saitama and Genos about how, about his, um, dojo and his technique and asks them to give it a try, but they both refuse mainly because they aren't entirely interested in looking forward to it. They don't particularly want to learn some techniques, but, but they came, but they came out of respect for Bang. And, but then Charanko is upset because they belittled him, belittled the, their, his master and tries to fight them, but Genos just shows up and grabs him by the neck and that's the end of it. And then, and then Genos asks if Charanko is really Bang's best disciple and Bang reveals that sadly, yes he is because his disciple before him, Garo, who becomes a major antagonist for the second half of the manga, he... He basically went turbo nuts and put many of Bang's disciples in the hospital and Bang had to throw him out on his ass. Um, but yeah, that's essentially what happened. Um, and Saitama marvels at this because because uh, Bang's an old man and obviously he's not a, as fit as he used to be. And Saitama marvels at this because despite, because despite being an old man, Bang can kill, can still kick some serious ass, which is, which also upsets Tronco because he thinks that Saitama is mocking him for being old, and then points out that that he's the strong, one of the strongest heroes in Class S, and that Saitama should pay him more respect. But then Bang talks Tronco down and tells him that he that Saitama is several times stronger than him, and it doesn't really matter if he gets belittled or, or not because he's already stronger than 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 Bang was at his age um and then a member of the Heroes Association shows up sees that Genos is there and invites and says both of them are needed at headquarters and Saitama is asked to tag along and at the headquarters they run into the character Atomic Samurai who who is briefly introduced to Saitama, but refuses to shake his hand because he do he's waiting to befriend Saitama until he's official because he doesn't want to upset the status quo or any of that because he knows how important it is to that the Hero Association keeps everybody kind of segregated in their little groups. So it's, and it's a problem. And then Tatsumaki is there. She's She just sees Saitama show up, belittles him for showing up because he, because any, um, polite person would have declined but Saitama decided to show up because they might have needed him and Saitama basically just ignores her and walks off he said and asks Genos who he is who she is and it's revealed that she's an esper which we already knew she's able to level entire buildings with her mind so yeah and then we finally see all of the here all the s-class heroes listed in order each with their own relevant monologues um in order they are hold on i got a list here um because we have purry genos metal bat tank top master flashy flash watchdog man super alley dark shine pig god drive knight Z zombie man king pal metal knight child emperor atomic samurai bang tatsumaki and blast black and Metal Knight and Blast are both absent because they can't get a hold of them for whatever reason. Blast never shows up in the series. We don't know why. We don't know where he is. Um, but we do. But we do eventually find out about 
him and ha how he has a secret history with Tatsumaki a little bit, but we don't exactly learn anything about him or who he is. All we all we really see is that he looks a little bit like Saitama with a little with um sh with um short stocky hair and has a and has an attack suit just like him, except it has a flare and the and the colors are reversed on his costume. So he has so he kind of looks like. On Pond Melon, which is where which is, who Saitama was inspired off of, except that he kind of except that he has a little flair and hair, whereas On Pond Melon does not. Um, but anyway, at this point, Sis shows up and gives him the situation, explains how Madame Shiwa Baba Baba was is dead, and that how she made a prediction in the pa about the past six months about how everything is going to basically go to shit in the next six months and that they need to be prepared for a fight because the because as is re revealed in her message is f five words only the earth is in danger I, and that is probably one of the darkest ones ever one of the darkest things ever because she, she because it's explained that she never uses the word danger lightly and has not once used it in one of her predictions, and also that her predictions are 100% accurate. And while and while Sitch is talking, um, Saitama leans over to Puri and asks him what what he, who Madame Shiwa Babawa is, and Puri, Puri explains that Madame Shiwa Babawa is a seer for the Heroes Association, who is kind of like a freelance seer. She died, and she and she died because she choked on a cough drop, which is kind of. Which is both sad and tragically hilarious because on the one hand, yeah, you were expecting her to die of like old age or a heart attack or something because of what she saw. No, she she had a coughing fit and co choked on a cough drop. But at the same time, it's kind of, it's also kind of tragic because that's a very real world scenario where you can actually choke on a cough drop and die. So uh, maybe don't put a cough drop in your mouth when you're when you're starting to cough and wait until you've stopped coughing so that it doesn't go down your throat and choke you to death. But I'm getting sidetracked a little bit. And it's also and Sitch also points out that they need to be prepared for a fight sometime in the next six months. And then Saitama speaks up and points out that sometime in the next six months is as vague as it happening today and that it could happen like literally five seconds from now and to an extent it kind of does because at that point at that point the heroes association headquarters is attacked by the side sky folk the led by the sky king and their and his four sons um who attacked the sky folk and who attacked the the sky folk attacked the heroes association building and are immediately mulled down by an alien Melzigard who shows up with his crew the deep the dark matter of thieves um whose leader isn't revealed until the very end of this episode so we'll wait on that and and the and the ship decimates the entire all of a city in a fraction of a second it's like that's how fast it is in a, in a matter of a second it's decimated and and Sitch is freaking out because it's happened because the Prophecy happened so quickly, and Saitama was pretty much the only one who knew that it could happen, because he kind of does have this sixth sense, kind of. It's like he knows what's going to happen before it actually happens, and is able to keep up with it, with it, kind of like that. It's a running joke in the series, and it's never actually addressed as one of his power sets, but it is a thing, because to an extent, he does kind of have a sixth sense, because he can kind of see things before they actually happen when he's fighting. So he's actually able to keep up with his opponent fairly quickly. Because any normal person wouldn't be able to do what he does. But that's not the point. Upon realizing that the A-City has been destroyed, Saitama tunnels his way out of the building and aboards the ship and proceeds to fight his way through. Um, and, it's also, and it's also revealed that the Heroes Association was built by the top Metal Knight so that it could withstand pretty much anything that anybody ever throws at it which is why it has no windows um so and then and then as, and then Melzigard shows up shows up tries to kill kill a kid and his father while they're inside the whole uh heroes so while they're uh, trying to get their life together and get out of there but atomic samurai's fight disciple shows up 
and whose name we only hear like briefly he's doesn't exactly um we don't he's not exactly a major character he's kind of there and tries to attack the and tries to attack the kid but but atomics and and the the disciple loses an arm and then atomic samurai blast no not blast blast wasn't there what am i talking about um Bang. Why do so many people have different, so many similar names in this universe? Um, I mean, I mean, it makes sense that Bang and his brother Bomb for, are, are brothers and they have similar sounding names, but Blast, can, but why? He isn't related to them at all. Why do so many people have so many confusing names in this universe? Anyway, um, at, anyway, anyway, Atomic Samurai, Bang, Puri Puri Prisoner and Metal Bat all show up, and Puri Puri Prisoner delivers an Agent Rush, but a modified version of it by taking what he was told by the Deep Sea King and modifies his combo move um, so that it becomes the Dark Angel Rush, which is designed to actually kill somebody and is actually a lot more effective at fighting Melzigard. Um, as opposed to what went down when he last fought with his regular Angel Rush. So the Dark Angel Rush is has apparently been introduced as a concept so that because it's kind of like the whole legacy of the Deep Sea King thing because there's a couple of heroes that were deeply affected by what happened with the Deep Sea King and his legacy will live on with them forever hence why some of the heroes actually wind up retiring but he all Meanwhile, meanwhile, the S-Class heroes all bicker among themselves about what to do with the ship. S trigger brought on by King, who is told, who tells them that there's nothing he can do because it's floating in the sky, and that there's nothing they can do to bring the ship down. Um, which causes a bunch of bickering between all the other S-Class heroes because, Ki because King and Tatsumaki start fighting, even and King could potentially kill Tatsumaki and vice versa. So. Super Ally Darkshine tries to defuse the entire situation. Um, it doesn't work, obviously, but he tries, and that's what's important. Um, and there's also one one last character, Grory Bass, who's kind of introduced, but is killed within the five seconds he's introduced. So, I mean, I will show a picture of him here, but he's not exactly relevant to the plot at all because he's killed. He does give a little bit of the summary for the next episode, but that's really it. Um, he's not exactly a major character and it's also revealed that Lord Boros and it's also reveals the main that Lord Boros is the main villain for this arc it doesn't actually name him until next episode but he is pictured at the very end of this episode and he seems to be a little bit pissed off that Saitama is just punching his way through his ship and just destroying everything and it's it is kind of and that's really the episode I mean it does it does establish a lot that there's a god level threat coming in the next six months and that they need to be prepared and then Saitama basically like well it could happen right now so and then it does happen immediately as he says that and Saitama gets involved to fight it gets involved to take it out so it's yeah it does it does what it's supposed to do it's a it builds up for the next two episodes I like it I like this episode um it's it does a lot it also and also, I will mention some things about Lord Boros when we actually see more of him, because there are things about him that you need to know. Because he will be, because he does have some powers that do make him a fair fight for Saitama in the end, which is pretty much the whole a great way to leave the series off for this first season. But we, but I'm not going to discuss to discuss what his powers are. Just know that he does eventually give Saitama a fair fight. But we don't see that until the very end in the final episode, which is what the final episode basically serves to be. It's just a fight between the two most powerful people in the universe, sh facing off, get facing off to see who's stronger. And it and it will I will review that obviously later when I get to it. But for right now, I just want to know what you if you have seen this episode of One Punch Man, what did you guys think? Let's get a comment. To, comment discussion going down below or over on my discord server which is in the description as all as for all my videos and until then until you guys decide whether or not to what your opinion was on it 
thank you guys so much for watching this episode. If you liked it, hit that like and the subscribe button. Also be sure to follow me on Facebook and on Twitter in the description below. And until next time, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.